you. Hi, I'm Nicola Harwood, and this is Alison Baker, and we've also got James Shackleton, and we're from Nelson Public Libraries. In June of last year, we were wondering how to engage the growing number of our users who are primarily accessing our library remotely. We have popular, well-attended book chat groups. Was it possible to recreate these discussions reading online? About reading online. Serendipitously, we received an email via the New Zealand Libs listserv from Ellen Forsyth from the State Library of New South Wales. Ellen talked of a Twitter reading group that had started in New South Wales in 2011 as part of Australian National Year of Reading Activities. In 2012, the group went national across Australia and the email said that from 2013 they were interested in attracting global partners. As well as from New Zealand, Ellen got expressions of interest from Denmark and Singapore. We were intrigued whether the small content elements of microblogging sites such as Twitter could be used to sustain a reading discussion. Join in the Twitter feed with hashtags NDF2013, we have the old one before they changed it, and RWP chat if you want to join us tonight. Uh, we were keen to give it a go. We already use Twitter in our library to make announcements and to promote events and items in our collections. In, 2000, in October 2012, we joined in on an Australian session of the Twitter group, which was chaotic but fun, enough to be encouraging. In November, we did a presentation at the Nelson Tasman Regional National Digital Forum Bar Camp on the Twitter group, and the following week we had a trial discussion with nine library staff and one member of the public. According to a post-session questionnaire, three participants had found it fun, but four found it fun but confusing, and one just found it frustrating. On the basis of this, we did more education on how to use Twitter, how the group could work, and how to use hashtags. We did a small presentation to our local regional librarians group prior to Christmas 2012 and made flyers and posters to put around our libraries. We also asked our local independent bookshop to help us promote the group and we had small articles in the December and January issues of our free council newspaper, Liv Nelson. And just to explain this, it is actually supposed to be moving at the moment because <laughs> we have got people tweeting from all over the world but I'm not quite sure why it's not loading. Um, but anyway, just imagine that it's moving. Um, from this year, the group has been renamed Read, Watch, Play, with participants being encouraged to talk about what they're watching and playing, as well as what they're reading. There are logistical problems with a trek group that encompasses Australia, Singapore, Denmark and New Zealand, and specifically these are time zones and language. The group is across four time zones. Three of the countries more or less coincide for chats, so 8 p.m. Australian time is 6 p.m. Singapore time and 12 noon Central European time, but it's 10 o'clock in New Zealand. So we kick off at 9 o'clock on the last Tuesday of each month with most of the other participants joining in at 10 o'clock New Zealand time. The language is an issue, is a problem in Denmark where many of the people interested in the group are not very good English speakers. This is managed by the participating librarians using the monthly themes in their library book discussions with users and the librarians participating in the group chat sessions. Public Library Singapore participation was initiated by a group in charge of digital content and social media. They use sites like blogs, Twitter, Instagram and Facebook. To cater for local preferences and increase relevance to local readers, they alternate between the RWP chats and have separate Twitter chats on local themes on the other months. It moved. <laughs> Susan Price has done a tweet. There's a rewatch play blog with all the core information as well as postings for each month's theme. There's a Pinterest account, which is becoming more active, an Instagram account, and of course the Twitter stream that's managed by hashtag. The hashtags are used to search throughout the month and also during the live chat sessions. Participants from around the world are able to tweet according to the set monthly theme at any time in the month, accumulating in a group discussion on Twitter on the last Tuesday of the month using the hashtag RWP chat as well as a theme hashtag for that month. Of course, it's the last Tuesday of the month tonight. The organising librarians from different countries communicate in various ways, from face-to-face -face meetings with the New South Wales librarians to all the countries having meetings via Google Hangout. The monthly chats are sent to participants via Storyfy, where they are archived. We all participated in the writing of a joint paper on the Twitter group via Google Docs, and the paper was presented at a satellite session of the IFLA World Congress in Singapore in August, with some of us who were not able to go, like us, to go tweeting into the session. 
There was a lot of interest in the concept of that presentation, and Ellen is hopeful that one, if not a couple of new libraries from around the world, will join the group, possibly adding the United States to our globe. So, the Nelson experience. Throughout 2013, we have tried to relate activities to the Read, Watch, Play themes of the month, promoting the group via our face-to-face -face monthly book chats and our one-off activities. For example, during March, which was New Zealand Book Month, we held a reader's evening on the theme of Eco-Read, which was the RWP theme for that month, and invited Jane Connor, a distinguished publisher of environmental books and guides, as a guest speaker. We promote the group via large posters and flyers in the library, and also via Twitter, and from about halfway through the year, via Facebook. New Zealand has contributed four guest blogs to the RWP blog this year, and we have linked our customers to the RWP blog via tweets, Facebook, and the book group page on our website. The program has not been a huge success. Um, initially, we were getting an average of about um, an average of about half a dozen librarians a month joining in um, from New Zealand, but that has started to decrease. And we have no way, apart from those who tell us they do, of knowing the numbers of staff or customers who either observe or don't participate, or who participate and don't use hashtags. Because if we don't use hashtags, we don't know that you're tweeting. We posted an invitation on the New Zealand Lip List Serve in July to try and get more New Zealand librarians tweeting, and we got one interested reply to the post, but no apparent new participants at the following discussion. So one barrier for New Zealand participation is that our sessions start at 9 o'clock, which many consider too late. The sessions are beneficial to our staff. It's good professional development, engaging with librarians from different countries and exposing themselves to a wide range of books and ideas. But we also want the sessions to be a way of engaging with those customers who cannot make it to our face-to-face -face book chats, or those who are increasingly accessing our library services remotely. But despite interest in the flyers and customers asking about the group, we are apparently not attracted, we have apparently not attracted participation from our customers. We want to increase the number of non-library participants and also the number of non-New Zealand public libraries librarians participating. So join up. There's going to be a chat this evening on Mo Read for November, ostensibly to celebrate mustachioed authors, Mark Twain, H.G. Wells, Thomas Hardy, Rudyard Kipling, etc. But we are sure it will range more generally over books by books. With a larger number of participants, we could possibly look at an earlier start time as the discussion will be self-sustaining. This evening it's at 9 o'clock. So if you have Wi-Fi where you are, at 9 o'clock, have a go. So just if you want to join in, you just search on um, Low Read, and every time you write a tweet, you just add in the hashtags as well. So you have in Low Read and RWP. You've got protection on your Twitter account, unprotect your tweets for the duration of the session. Keep searching on MoRead and add MoRead in our RWB chat to all your tweets. Keep clicking on all to load new tweets. Sorry, I just so never get <laughs> supposed to do that. Just back up. Here we are. Unprotect. So, any questions, comments, suggestions for how to get this moving? Or is this not the appropriate forum? for a book chat type discussion, which is our big question. It is actually a lot of fun. <laughs> and like Nicola was saying, one of the um, big advantages for us is the um, professional development side of it. The last discussion we had was Ego Read, and a lot of the discussion was around how the libraries actually shelve biographies, like if they put them under the 1920s or if they put them under the subject. Um, one library in New South Wales put their biographies amongst the fictional recreational reading to promote the use. And so, um, yeah, it's a good fun. Barriers with staff and trying to get them on board and perceptions of Twitter and that with Laura Lewis. and Susan. Yeah, <laughs> they're really keen. This is Helen, this is the um, woman who started it all in New South Wales. 
South Wales. Um, we quite it's it's a mixture, it's a real yeah. mixture. Some people think it's a great device, some people think that it just doesn't give you enough space. And by the time, the trouble is by the time you put all the hashtags in to kind of engage with different people and theme, you kind of not left with a lot. <laughs> so um, that can be a bit frustrating. And also some people just find it, they, they can't think that quickly to keep engaged with the discussion. Yeah, but it's but it does it does work. It's going. Oh, it's Australia, and it's a right. quantum thing. The more people are there, it's you need at least three facilitators because there's more than one conversation going on at one time. Um, and all of a sudden, you realise it was big on the thread that you want to join into that you don't really see until you click on conversation and then you can dive into it. Um, but yeah, there are some people who find it just way too. That's fine. <laughs> but we are sure that there are other people who would find it great fun. And it would be nice to have New Zealanders. Sometimes Nicola and I are in New Zealand. <laughs> We're at home. You said that you um, provided training for your uh, library users. What was the uptake on that? For the staff, we did, we did that for the staff. We haven't really found a forum to do it for customers apart from in the book chat sessions that we run, so that's a quick. But that's because they're an older group. They're perhaps, they, they're perhaps not the ones who would engage with the, with the Twitter reading group. So I think there are other people out there who you know, we haven't quite reached. So, so is, is it a combination then of, of people who will use Twitter and having the right book subject to yeah, yeah. yeah. And and what, what really puzzles us, that, that puzzles us, is that we've got lots of flyers around the library and people come up and talk to us about the group and they seem really interested and we say that we'll help set them up and everything, but we just never see them online on the Tuesday evenings and <laughs> I'm not quite sure why. And there was a woman from Queenstown who came up and said, this is exactly what I want because I haven't got a local reading group and she was very comfortable online and we just never saw her again. <laughs> Have you ever had any interactions with authors on Twitter? No, no we haven't actually, not knowingly, not knowingly. I'm sure there are some who aren't on closet authors in there, but again that would be a really interesting sort of way for them to interact with. Yeah, we follow a lot of authors because yeah. authors and librarians are just mega Twitter users like yeah. tech. Elizabeth wants to shut up quite often on Twitter. <laughs> 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 Always tweeting. Um, and actually, that's a, getting our, because we've got a very, in Nelson, lots and lots of local authors, and getting them involved would be a fantastic thing to do. So we should market yeah. it to the authors group. Yeah, it's a great idea. Similar concept called Sci Student Chat, which is encouraging students to engage with scientists and sort of get first hand information mm -hmm. from them. Yeah, it would be quite an interesting concept. You have, 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 a, a, guest, have a guest, yeah, that's what I would have. Catch us at 9 o'clock. The, blo <laughs> <laughs> the blogs are really great because they um, quite often have a guest and they have four primary. They had a, um, a court artist, you know, people that go in and draw you in court, well, not you, but people in court. And they did this really, really great blog on um, yeah how they go and what they do when they're doing it. And there was another one like um, can you can you solve crimes by watching CSI? And they had a, an inspector from the police that came and wrote that one. But yeah, yeah getting a guest Twitter thing, but, yeah, because we had enough news in this, we could start it early. But yeah, with only a few of us, that's. And also, it's quite different. The different dynamics of the of the different countries. Sometimes it's actually would be actually quite good to engage more with New Zealand writing, but um, it doesn't often happen. And that was particularly interesting with the one with we had an Indigiread um, theme, which proved actually incredibly challenging because I think Alison was there, maybe tweeting about, New about New Zealand, New Zealand. and the, the Australians actually didn't engage much with it at all because the, the, that culture isn't as strong. They were very in, really, really interested in the New Zealand side of it, but it would have been really good to engage more with fellow New Zealanders on that particular subject. But a great blog up, which kind of is yeah, fabulous. Yeah. And, that, and that's where I think the micro-content stuff 
was really challenged. Mm -hmm. I'd like to discuss some of those issues like the movie Utu and the effect of that on both Māori and Pākehā in New Zealand. You know, 140 characters minus the it was very they easy to be misinterpreted. <laughs> you would have seen it for the themes for next year. They've taken the, that sort of discussion out of it because it's just it's too yeah, too interesting. Yeah. Too, 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 too. Have you considered uh, not using the time? I mean, keep on saying how 9 o'clock is a problem. Have you tried doing it? I mean, does the time matter? I, well, I think mm -hmm. it does just in terms of, I don't know, for some reason they think it's too late to start something. <laughs> and we had a trial that was earlier and because we just did it within our group and that actually was, was a lot more successful. The reason it's 9 o'clock though is because to engage with the Australians and Singapore and all the different countries, so it's kind of, otherwise it's just too early or too late for those people. So it's, I mean, that's the idea of the group at the moment. All we'd really do, like to do is have a spin-off New Zealand group where we can actually choose a more convenient time. It's actually 9 o'clock is quite late when you're kind of going on till about midnight and you've got to stay sharp, <laughs> you know. Yeah, and, I, and we, um, like there's about three Australians that come on at 9 o'clock bars, which so if it was 8 o'clock they had to do an extra two hours of tweeting before they went into like 1 o'clock in the morning for us. But again, if there was enough of us, we could do it for an hour and then they could all join in. But Denmark's great, like they're really funny when they get in. <laughs> okay, 9 o'clock tonight. Low reach and RWP chat and I'm sure we've got Wi-Fi in your <laughs> or in your PowerPoint. Once again, you